Up to 3,200 contestants, each the epitome of their distinct breed, all under one sizable roof. Such a stately canine gathering comes but once a year, at the Westminster Dog Show. While here, every breed is behaving at their best, but we know that back home, each dog acts different from the rest. There is no other breed or species of animal with such a wide variety of appearance and behavior. Dr. James Serple of the University of Pennsylvania is an animal behaviorist fascinated with man's best friend. I'm perennially interested in the extraordinary variation among pet dogs. <laughs> Sorry. The fact that today's domestic dogs come in such a vast variety pack is primarily a man-made phenomenon. Dogs adapted to living with humans, and then people began to realize that they had predispositions that people could exploit. That got developed and diversified and specialized and reflected what the dog was used for. But in the mid-19th century, people became less interested in what their dogs were doing and more interested in how they looked doing it. This was the beginning of a canine career change for many existing breeds. The fundamental purpose of dogs now is just to provide people with companionship. But then a lot of these breeds still show those original behavioral predispositions to do particular things. And when kept from doing those particular things, today's dogs may do some peculiar things. Beagles, bred to hunt in packs, often howl for company when left alone. <coughs> Terriers, hardwired to dig ferociously for small rodents, can wreak havoc in yards and parks. And border collies, consummate sheep herders, have been known to corral us instead. Just how deeply ingrained these behavioral predispositions are is of particular interest for Dr. Serple. The behavior of dogs is difficult to study because they live in people's houses where you can't really observe them. In order to get a glimpse behind closed doors, Serple created a crafty solution called sea bark. The simple idea behind the sea bar was just to develop a very detailed survey that would enable dog owners to tell you how their dogs respond to all sorts of different stimuli in their environment. And not surprisingly, owners are eager to dish when it comes to their dogs. With over 80,000 responses, Seabark may be the world's largest collection of behavioral doggy data. From this massive amount of information, clear patterns emerged, particularly regarding aggressive behavior. I think we found that about 90% of greyhounds never shows territorial aggression. The data also revealed that pit bulls and akitas, originally bred to fight their own kind or guard owners, showed peaked aggression towards other dogs. Yet the title of most aggressive overall went to the dachshunds, who despite their obvious charm, display heightened aggression towards dogs, strangers, even their owners. But Dr. Serple cautions that Seabark data paints a more complex picture than expected. Yes, you'll have 10, 15% of dogs that are showing very high levels of aggression. But you also have 20 or 30% that are showing zero. As a result, Dr. Serple believes that judging Spike, or Fluffy, based solely on their breed, is overlooking one of the most important aspects of what makes a dog a dog. There's a tremendous effect of owners on dogs. They perceive signals from us that we're not even aware we're giving. Little attributes of personality we may have probably change the way they typically behave. It's unendingly interesting to me. Professor Serple's perpetual interest continues to be fed by the ongoing Seabark study. In fact, it's not too late to share your own four-legged family member's unique profile. No matter their breed or purity of bloodline, every dog is a mix of genes and human input. There's no beagle exactly like Henry, no pug precisely like Remy. With such endless variations, you could say that each is their very own best in show.